So in today's video, we are going to be tearing down the Bitax Gamma Turbo. So the reason for this is just to see the chips underneath and take off the fans, see everything on the back of the board and just give you guys a look at the chips underneath. And then we'll actually do a little segment on potential heat sinks because I've done some looking and we could potentially change the heat sink on this to a different heat sink. I don't know whether it'd actually be useful but that's what we're going to be doing today. So we're just going to be tearing it down, taking it off, showing you, replacing the thermal paste, and then maybe look at some heat sinks that we could upgrade on this, maybe for potentially in the future when you guys actually get your hands on the Bitax Gamma Turbo. So as I mentioned in the previous video, this is actually a prototype, and this came from How Mining. I do have a link in the description for 10% off anything else, such as the Node QX, the Bitax, and I believe that there's a Bitcoin node as well available, but there is also a link to the landing page for this, so you can actually sign up with your email and get notified when it actually goes live. I haven't got a release date, and they don't either. We're still awaiting for the full GitHub release for this. Currently in prototype, as I said, but you can sign up on email to get notified when it does go live. So first thing we need to do is actually take it out of this power mining case, which we'll do right now. And all we have to do is unscrew these. So these are hex bolts or hex nuts. And we have to unscrew all of them to get it out of the case. So there we go. We've actually taken the case off there. And let's have a look at the back of it. So there's the back. As you can see there, you have the XT30 power supply. You have the ESP there, the micro USB or USB-C. And then you have the two chips which sit right here and right here the voltage regulators on the back here, and then the heat sink mounts that you have here and here. Also notice that the fan is now in the middle of the board, whereas it used to be around this area previously. So we also want to be extra careful with this because it is a prototype, so we're not trying to damage anything. Also the boot buttons are on the back, so boot is here and then reset is by here. So I think simply the best way to take off the heat sink is going to be unscrewing from this end and then these will actually come off and then we can see the chips underneath replace the thermal paste and then we'll look at different heat sinks as i mentioned in the other video it's very clean because a lot of the components are just moved to the back of the board so you don't really need to worry about kind of anything else it looks a lot sleeker like this so let's go ahead and take this heat sink off so there we have it we can actually take the heat sink off now and there is the two chips underneath. We can just unplug the fan as well. And that is it. So you have the two chips by here, and then you have some thermal pads by here which are, I'm assuming, trying to take some of the thermal heat away from the voltage regulators on the back as well. So as you can see, these have some exposed on the board, and then you flip it over and you can see them there. So it's trying not to heat them up as well. So you're also cooling both components at the same time, which is interesting to see. And there's not much on the front in terms of anything that's sticking out, only the fan and then LCD and some little bits from the power supply right there. It's made with the BM1370, so the same as the Gamma. So you're gonna have two of those chips by there. I don't know whether it would be more beneficial to have them a little bit closer, but I suppose the heat is dissipating out of the board by here and here as well. But that's pretty much it in terms of the teardown. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna clean the heat sink right here and then clean the thermal paste the fan doesn't need any cleaning, but they are 60 millimeters. So as I said at the start of the video, we are going to be looking for a heat sink that is also 60 millimeter that might fit this design. So hopefully we can upgrade it in the future. I'm sure there'll be a lot of custom things that do come in the future for the Bitax Gamma Turbo when it does fully release. So I'm excited to see the different heat sinks that people come up with. But now let's go into cleaning it. So we're going to take off the thermal paste from here and here and then we'll just leave the thermal pads because they don't really need replacing 
but now that we've taken it off, we kind of need to replace the thermal base underneath. And we're going to be doing it the same method we always do with some Q-tips, some isopropyl alcohol, and a microfiber cloth. So I'll show you once we've cleaned it all up. Okay, so there we have it. The two chips on the board. If you can see there, it's upside down, but you have BM1370 and then BM1370. A little bit less clean than I'd like to, but it's fine. And that's pretty much it on the board. So obviously it has FOSS and then GTFO, but the one thing is the heatsink is actually harder. I think it's gonna be harder to get back on than the normal heatsink because it's not spring pinned in. It requires you to also attach the fan through whilst you're also putting the heatsink on. So that's probably why it was all smushed around on the heatsink there. And now all that's left to do is add back the thermal paste. So we're just gonna go in here, try to zoom it in. So that should be okay for both of them. Obviously we can always replace it if it doesn't actually work, but this should all be good for whatever. I don't think you need to replace it straight off the bat. Obviously you can wait uh, six months, but we just wanted to tear it down and show you guys what is actually underneath. So now the last done, we can put it all back together and then we'll show you it up and running, chuck it over to the computer and we'll show you the new heat sinks that we've come up with that could potentially work. Or you guys can leave suggestions in the comments below what heat sinks you guys would like to see or try as this is 60 millimeter. So anything that kind of fits that profile, it should be a candidate for what we're doing here. So there it is all put back together. One thing I want to note as well is that this is very hard to put this heat sink back on. Um, I don't know whether that is a work in progress, but it's actually very hard to get it all lined up and stop it moving around just because these fans, they're trying to move around whilst you're also trying to put the heat sink back on. So if you do get one of these, I recommend not trying to change it out too regularly. Or if there's another solution for a heat sink that comes along, as we're going to discuss later on, I'd recommend maybe waiting until somebody comes out with a heat sink that might fit a little bit better. This will do for now. And all we got to do is hook it back up and we'll get it spinning up and then we'll move over to the computer to show you different heat sinks that we could go for in the future plus maybe a different fan that we could use as well so it seems to be running fine as you can see here we've got it up on the computer we're at a hash rate average of 2.3 and then efficiency is 17.84 one of the things i want to mention is the efficiency isn't ever going to be as good as a gamma i don't think at least on the default settings just because of the two chips and the board, it shouldn't technically be more efficient than just one chip on the board. ASIC temperature, default, measured ASIC frequency, default overclocks. We haven't really done any overclocking, but that's probably gonna be the next video. But we do kind of have to be careful because it's still in prototype. So maybe we won't push it that far just because we might be pushing it a little too far. Also with the power supply, I believe it's only up to 60 watts, but we could switch over to the Zyber 8 power supply, which can do over 180, but I don't think it's ever going to get to that. So it looks like everything is fine. Nothing's really gone wrong in terms of putting the heat sink back on. But if we move over to heat sinks, so you have a bunch of places you can search for heat sinks. And normally the place where I go is either going to be DigiKey or you can just look on AliExpress or a bunch of other places. This one is actually very thick. so. So it's got a good height on it. So it's 60 by 60. And if you just type in 60 by 60 on DigiKey, a bunch of them do show up. Most of them are aluminium. I'm assuming that this one that we have on the Gamma Turbo is also aluminium as well. So you have things like this, which are just standard ones. I don't know how this would configure with the fan, but it is 25 millimeters. And the heatsink that we're currently using is around 40 millimeters. So you need something a lot bigger than this to dissipate the heat. You have smaller ones, but I don't think these are gonna work. These are too small. 
there's another one there which is 25 millimeters, different design. And then you have some copper ones. This is only 14 millimeters, probably not going to be good. You have uh, the same, you have the same style, but it's only two pin, and normally that doesn't really work because you have two chips underneath, and it's also probably not the correct, and it's probably not the highest millimeter that we need. You do have other ones like this, 14, and then you do have ceramics, but I don't really think that ceramics are the best place to go for heat sinks. But you do have other options, like this is from AliExpress, where you could, in theory, do this, but you would need some different type of upgrades for the placement on it, because these actually extend out, so it wouldn't be the 60 millimeter frame that you're looking for. There is potential if you do find one on AliExpress or any of these other websites. There's a bunch of coolers out there that you could use, probably, but we just haven't kind of but we haven't gone around it. If we go here, we can see you can get custom heat sinks. Let's see if they have any for processors. So these are a bit different. We wouldn't really want them. I mean, it's obviously going to have to be a specialized cooler that comes along next. It could be something like a radiator cooler like this, where it just only covers the two chips. Kind of seen that with the ice tower. So maybe there's a bigger version of the ice tower out there that could potentially do it. The thing with making it 60 millimeter is there's not really much out there. I know with stuff like the Nerd QXs, you you have a lot of heat sinks you could go for because they are basically the same size as a GPU heat sink. And also with the Zyber 8, that is also a CPU heat sink that you could potentially use. But none of them really go to 60 millimeters. So if you also look here, normally what I do is check a bunch of websites, see if there's anything, because pretty much with the bit axes, everyone's figured out how to everyone's figured out what the best heat sinks they want to use are. There are new ones that are getting produced, but because this is a new version of the Gamma Turbo, I believe that Gecko Science also have this miner, but it's under their Gecko Science kind of version of the Gamma Turbo, and they're using a different heat sink that goes across the whole board, which is slightly different. You could see things like this coming in the future. I don't really think that there's much out there in terms of 60 by 60 because I think it's a very niche market for these type of heat sinks. So you probably want something that's 60 by 60 by 40, ideally, but it still doesn't look like there's that many out there. Maybe potentially this one for Nocta. As I said, you're getting into CPU territory then, or you could even have something like this, which, which is kind of what we're seeing right now that is currently on there. So there's a bunch of things that we could go for, but if you guys have any suggestions, then you can let me know in the comments because I'm always up for trying to find a better heatsink. And something ideally this copper that would be easy to fit on as well. Something like the copperzilla that you have for the bit axes normally, and just a bigger version of that. I wonder if there's anything like that floating around that could potentially be used on the Gamma Turbo. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Make sure you like the video, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next one.